G'day there guys, searching for logic in an illogical world, back at it again with another episode of r slash am I the a-hole. Now if you love this content like I love you, then I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a like on the video, and a prawn on the barbie, and get ready for some bloody good content. Posted by user Huckleberry Resident, titled, Am I the a-hole for calling animal control and having my sister's dog taken away? Hello all, I, 22 female, am super allergic to dogs, like oatmeal baths and peeling skin days later, allergic. My sister, 24 female, knows this, and yet constantly asks me to dog sit her little Cujo, a four-ish year old border collie. I always, always say no. Well, today she asks, and I say no, and think it's the end of it. Nope. One hour later, I hear my front door open, close, and car drive off. I go to see what's happening, and there's Cujo, completely tearing apart my mudroom. So, he's essentially contained in this room where you're meant to take off your coats, shoes, umbrellas, blah blah blah, before you get into the house. The first door doesn't have a lock, it's kind of like a screen, and the second door that leads into my house does. She leaves him in between these two. I immediately call my sister, who says she just needed to leave him with me for a week, and that I can just put him in the backyard and feed him once a day. She didn't leave any food. I tell her that she has 30 minutes to come back and get the dog, or I'm calling animal control. She says she's on her way out of town on a freaking bus, and can't make it. I just hang up. 30 minutes later, no sister. I call animal control, and they take Cujo away. He has wrecked my entire mudroom, probably five pairs of shoes, a couple jackets, and an antique bench thing. My sister calls three hours later to ask about the dog, who is obviously no longer there. I tell her as much, and that she'll be paying back for the damages as well. She screams at me for a second before realizing she needs to go get Cujo, and hangs up to try to get someone else to pick him up. The shelter has a 48-hour policy, so he could be adopted out if someone doesn't pick him up soon. She refuses to pay me back, and I'm honestly thinking about just cutting her off entirely. Am I the a-hole? Edit, for everyone saying I should have called friends and posted on Craigslist, etc., you're probably right, but I didn't have the time and state of mind to do so. I couldn't move him to the yard or drive him somewhere without risking severely swollen eyes and tongue, and eventual full-body hives. Furthermore, he had wrecked the entrance to my home, and I've seen dogs chew and claw up floors, doors, and walls, which would be a much more costly repair. I absolutely wish I would have looked up specifically no-kill shelters, though. As far as I know, he hasn't been picked up yet, but our shelter was emptied out due to all the COVID adopters, so I am assumed that he'll be fine. I'll try to remember to update. Not the a-hole, and what entitlement. After you say no repeatedly, she dumps the dog on you for a week? She's not going to reimburse you for damages. Go ahead and cut her off. She's such an a-hole and didn't leave any food. Crazy entitlement, not the a-hole. Lack of food, poorly trained, she should not own a pet, especially a dog as smart as a Border Collie, number one smartest breed of all dog breeds. They need stimulation and training, not just thrown in a yard and fed by someone deathly allergic. What an a-hole. The dog going around tearing up the room also shows they were either extremely poorly trained or extremely stressed out, or maybe even both. No matter what it was, this post is just yikes on so many levels. Not the a-hole, please cut your sister off. And you did the poor dog a favor if he can get adopted by a responsible dog owner. Border Collies are very intelligent and active working dogs who need a lot of training and stimulation. It's not its fault it tore apart your belongings. It should have been trained years ago. And to drop a dog off for a week with no food, no toys, nothing? At minimum, your sister is a neglectful idiot. I know, Border Collies are so intense. I couldn't exactly blame him for ripping up my stuff. I suspect she left him with me because I'm the only one she knows with a yard. So yard equals Border Collie friendly, I suppose, lol. My Border Collie mix can hop and climb fences, so that's not Border Collie friendly to some. I had a Border Collie mix and he spent 15 years jumping and digging under fences. We replaced our old wood fence with a six and a half foot color bound fence, ran light, electrified wiring around the base, and then had to put up additional curved in tops for the bloody thing. 
The a-hole still got out until Hips gave up on him. Turns out he was climbing a bloody tree. I loved that little a-hole of a Houdini. Oh my god, what an a-hole. We had an Irish setter and an eight-foot huge chain-link fence, and the a-hole kept getting out. Was he climbing? Was he parkouring up trees? Was he turning sideways and shimmying through the stairs? No. My dad hid in the treehouse to spy one day. A-hole dog was opening the gate and closing it. What a sneak. He just wanted to go visiting that badly. We put a latch that you needed thumbs to open on it to stop him. Posted by user throwaway929300, titled, Am I the a-hole for refusing to split my inheritance with my siblings? I'll try to summarize as much as possible. I, female 19, have an estranged grandpa more or less. He's my dad's father, but my dad hardly had a relationship with him. I have two other siblings, one younger, 13, and one older, 26. My grandma divorced my grandpa when my dad was only 10, so he lived with my grandma his whole life in a different state and didn't see him. When he got older, he saw him a little more and my grandpa started coming around a little bit more as well. He'd stay for a week at a time and then go home. He was an old, bitter man to be honest. He never got remarried and lived his whole life in his coastal town with the same friends he'd had his whole life. He wasn't pleasant to be around and could hold grudges longer than anyone I've ever met. But regardless of this, he was filthy rich. He owned a successful business that he sold for a million dollars. He retired after selling, but his house sits on an island as well as the biggest piece of land on the island, so it sold for well over three million dollars. I was never close with my grandpa, but I look after his sister who is a registered nurse and he adores her. He always told me that he was proud to see me follow in her footsteps. He died a few months ago. Since then, my family has been torn apart. He left everything to me. He essentially liquidated all of his assets and it ended up being close to $8 million. I was shocked. I didn't and still don't know what to do with the money, but I'm going to save it. My dad and stepmom as well as my siblings are hounding me to split the money with them. I just can't do it. My dad is an alcoholic who never said anything nice about his dad. Despite him being bitter, my grandpa actually bought my dad a $300,000 house. My dad would 100% drink away any money given to him. As far as my siblings, my brother has full financial support from my grandma as he is the favorite, and he is very wasteful and ungrateful. He never talks to me, and always is very mean to me when he does. My little sister is the only person I've actually considered. She's very young, and that's really the only thing stopping me. Her mom is money-oriented, and would take the money from her. So I'm waiting until she's 18, and I offered to pay for her college. But now my family is telling me I'm unfair, and the money doesn't belong to me, and I'm not deserving of it. That I'm too young, and I'll waste it on cars and clothes. I don't agree, and now they're all threatening to cut me off and never speak to me, or even sue me if I don't give them all a chunk of the money. I don't know what to do, and I'm buckling under pressure here. I've already had two police officers out to my house because my dad is claiming I stole the money from him. Everything was through an attorney, I know I did nothing wrong legally, but morally, I don't know. So, am I the a-hole? I'm going to speak on this morally because I don't like really going into legalities on am I the a-hole, but the only legality I would go into is that give them the bare minimum that is required in a lease so that they don't have to hound you anymore. OP, you are not the a-hole at all for keeping the money. You have explained how everyone else is going to waste the money, and how they treated the father throughout his lifetime, and how you were the only one that actually showed up and was a positive influence in his life. You deserve it. They have all shown throughout his lifetime that they do not deserve the money. Therefore, I do not think that you should give them the money. It would be morally like spitting on your grandfather's grave because he wanted you to have it. So no, you are not the a-hole in this situation at all. Not the a-hole. My god, these entitled people. If they want to cut you off for money that your grandpa willed to you, show them the door. Buy yourself a lovely home and move away from them. Pay for your sister's college and save the rest. If you want to show right now that you are giving your younger sister the money, put it in a trust that only she can access at 18 or 21. Talk with a financial advisor slash lawyer to set this up. 
That way, the mum cannot have access to it, and it will be there for your sister should anything happen to you in the meantime. With that amount of money, I would speak to a financial advisor no matter what. It is very easy to blow through the money, not the a-hole. Depending on how much leverage the mum has, your mum might guilt your sister into handing the money over. You can set it up with a lawyer or accountant that has to approve withdrawals, which might be a nice stopgap in case OP isn't around to pay the money directly to the sister. Other steps can be taken to make sure the money goes where it's supposed to. Yeah, I wouldn't even mention a trust for the sister until she was old enough to access it. Telling everyone right now would just give the sister's mum years to manipulate the money out of her. Not the a-hole, considering the circumstances you mentioned. Lawyer the hell up. If they're going to sue you, you might as well be prepared to deal with the BA. Also, in terms of money, I highly recommend you invest. I don't want to tell you what to do, but you can turn that 8 million into generational wealth that can continue to provide for your family for decades to come. Even putting that into some sort of account with interest would be a lot of money made from just interest. My mum always said that if you win the lottery, you should put it in a bank with high interest and live off the interest money, which I think is a pretty smart move. I'm going to have to respectfully disagree, that may have been a pretty smart move, but now since the Fed lowered that rate to 0%, interest doesn't pay squat. My initially very high 2.3% interest from my brokerage is now 0.2%. You're better off buying high dividend stocks, generating passive income through dividends, which pay out monthly or quarterly, and letting the stock themselves appreciate in value, generating even more money. For example, $8 million and 0.2% interest is $16,000 a year. The stock BMO, on the other hand, has a 6.76% dividend yield, and individual share prices have gone up from $40.21 to $56.61 in the last three months. If you invested that same $8 million in BMO three months ago, you'd be up $3.26 million already, not counting the 6.76% dividend. Posted by user, Am I the A-hole throwaway 67? Titled, Am I the A-hole for letting my sister say arigato and konnichiwa at a Korean restaurant? So, my siblings and I, two sisters plus three brothers plus me, decided to go to a Korean barbecue place a while ago. One of my sisters, let's call her Maddie, is very proud of her language skills. I don't know what that even means. She doesn't let anyone correct her and gets very upset if someone tells her she's wrong. So, as soon as we enter the restaurant, she greets a waitress with a konnichiwa. This waitress is a pro. Doesn't even look surprised, she greets us in Korean and leads us to a booth. We all sit down and hope that Maddie doesn't say anything like that again. No such luck. Every time a waitress approaches our table, she greets them with a konnichiwa and says arigato when they put down our food. By the third or fourth time, even the staff are looking amused. One of my older brothers, brave soul he is, tries to tell Maddie to maybe cut down on the greetings and thanks, since we are at a Korean restaurant. Emphasis on Korean. She doesn't get it. Enter brave soul sibling number two, attempts to directly tell her she's talking to them in Japanese, gets cut off, none of us try again. At the end of the meal, we are all trying to hold back laughter. As we are leaving, sister turns around and says, Konbanwa. After leaving the restaurant, I was the first one to break. I start giggling, then my other sister follows as well. Maddie immediately asks us why we're laughing. We tell her that she'd been speaking Japanese in a Korean restaurant, and she vehemently denies it. We pull out Google Translate to prove it to her. Immediate, you could have done that while we were eating instead of letting me embarrass myself in front of them. Yeah, she didn't talk much during the drive home. Um, I'm gonna say no one's the a-hole here. It's not really an a-hole move at all to prove that to her. They did try to do it. She didn't realize, so I guess maybe the sister's an a-hole, but I'd say it's more the sister just was dumb, didn't understand, and refused to understand. I wouldn't say she was intentionally being an a-hole. Not the a-hole. This sounds like a damned if you do and damned if you don't moment. Your sister was told a number of times she was wrong, but she got annoyed at the interference. Then she got annoyed outside when she realized she messed up. Your input wouldn't have made any difference at all. Agree, not the a-hole. 
She was told twice and continued. She was certainly not left to speak Japanese unknowingly from entering to exiting the restaurant. I had second-hand embarrassment just reading the post. It's worse when you're on the other end. I'm Korean, and older white people with good intentions will say hello in Chinese or Japanese, and in my head I'm like, do I correct this guy, or just let it be? Also, when they absolutely butcher the language, it's hard to keep a straight face. Come salabalabalala. Ah, yes. Very good, sir. <laughs> Everyone sucks here. That poor server had to put up with your sister's crap, and I doubt that she thought, oh, well, I know the rest of the table is mocking her for it. Instead, she probably thought you were all like your sister. When you started laughing on the way out at her, that could be interpreted as the whole thing being intentional. Your sister is arrogant, but you should have clocked her after that first greeting. This is a Korean restaurant, stop using Japanese. Clock, in this case, doesn't mean punch. It means basically to check someone or call them out. It's queer black slang that I used, because I'm a black queer. This one. Restaurant staff have to put up with soft racism every single day and it hurts. The staff could have been born and raised in OP's country, and yet again they are hit by nihao, or whatever, by ignorant people, and made to feel they don't belong. Your sister sucks big time, and OP also the a-hole for not dealing with it. Not saying anything doesn't excuse it. Posted by user throwaway z 201301 titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my niece to stay in the closet until she gets her inheritance? My, 42 male, niece, 17 female, recently confided in me that she is a lesbian. I supported her, let her know I'd be there, etc. Usual ally stuff. However, she told me she was going to come out to the whole world this week. I let her know she should absolutely wait for her grandparents, my parents, to pass. My father is incredibly wealthy and has tens of millions of dollars in assets that he will be passing down once he is gone. My father is a raging homophobe, who has flat out stated that any gay individual in our family would be written out of the will, and to make sure the rest of us don't just split more money with said gay relative, they will instead have that portion of the inheritance, put aside for that family member, donated to charitable causes. That money will be erased from the inheritance. Since both my father and mother are incredibly poor health, stage 4 cancer and debilitating dementia respectively, I told my niece she should stay in the closet for a little while longer. If she comes out as a lesbian and they find out, she will quite literally lose out on $7 million. She was a little sad but also appreciative since that is obviously a life-changing amount of money that will allow her to live luxuriously until she dies. My wife, however, said that I am being an a-hole. I am telling this poor girl to hide who she is just to appease old bigots. That is true. I am asking her to appease old bigots, but I feel like her life quality will be much better with $7 million at the cost of one to two years in the closet at Tops. I have also seen my father's will and know who is getting what, so my niece is definitely going to receive $7 million as long as my father doesn't rewrite or edit his will. Am I the a-hole for telling my niece to stay in the closet so she can be a millionaire? Small update, my wife apologized for getting snippy with me, and now agrees she should hide it for a year or two. She is a powerful advocate of LGBTQ rights, so she had an angry knee-jerk reaction to my dad's bigotry. And I think that goes without saying, absolutely not the a-hole for telling her to do that. I'm pretty sure a lot of people would stay in the closet for one to two years just to get seven million dollars inheritance, when the risk is that in, that $7 million could go to causes that actively work against LGBTQ rights, I'm saying just morally I would do that if I was her. It seems the right thing to do, even though a lot of people would not agree with that. And people are entitled to their opinions. OP, not the a-hole. Oh god, I'm torn. This is honestly an excellent case study for an ethics class. My gut instinct is to say that you should never encourage someone to stay in the closet longer than they want to, but yeesh, that's a life-changing amount of money. No a-holes here, besides your parents for being raging homophobes. For ethical reasons, think of it this way. She stays in the closet for the next couple years, inherits the money of a homophobe, 
then once she has the inheritance, have a nice gay life and do not have to worry about her homophobic grandparents bothering her for who she loves. This is the way I see it. While it's unpleasant that the only way is to conceal her true self, it would provide a beyond sturdy foundation for the rest of her entire life and allow her to live a quality life of her choosing. She could also, once she inherits, donate to charities that would help troubled LGBTQ plus teens and young adults. And the reverse of that is, I have a feeling old Gramps is spiteful enough to have selected some anti-LGBT organizations for that seven million to be bestowed to. Normally, I wouldn't advocate for someone to stay in the closet, but one to two years to both get that money and also to prevent the money from going out to actively hurt other LGBT people seems like a really good reason to twiddle your thumbs. Not the a-hole. Seven million changes anyone's life, and it's not like she'll have to hide it forever. Info, are you and your wife the only ones who know? Yes, my wife, myself, and my niece. My father trusts me immensely and is willing to discuss these matters with me. My mother knows as well, but her dementia is so bad that it doesn't matter. She should also carefully consider how and to whom she shares the information amongst her friend group. I have seen people out others for horrible reasons. It would be awful if she chose not to come out now to family, only to have some Badinsky write a poison pen letter to her grandparents. Posted by user, Am I the A-Hole Throwaway 3722, titled, Am I the A-Hole for addressing my uncle who is the same age as me as my uncle on a social media post and embarrassing him? I, 17 female, have an uncle, 17 male. I've never viewed him as an uncle since he's the same age as me. Now, the little crap finds it hilarious to address me as a niece whenever we meet and insists that I call him uncle. Family is very meh about it, but mostly on his side. You address your other uncles as uncles, why not him? He's your grandfather's son as well, he deserves that title from you just as much as Uncle Y and Z and X do. Except, uncles X, Y, and Z are all around my mother's age, so 20 to 30 years older than me, not the same age. He really put on the waterworks the last time, and now I'm really the a-hole for making him feel left out by not calling him uncle and not responding when he says niece. I've been disinvited from a few family gatherings because I refuse to bow down. Well, in order to get on some of my family's good side, I posted a family pic taken on my birthday. In the caption I said, thank you to aunties XYZ and uncles XYZ. Except this time, I put him as an uncle. I thought this would tide them over since captioning him as an uncle is easier for me than calling him uncle to his face. My close friends know my family dynamics, but the people I don't really know well, they genuinely thought we were cousins of some sort. Well, I put him as uncle, people kinda went crazy. At first, they kept saying I accidentally put him as an uncle, and when I didn't reply, he started getting messages like, oh my god, is Opie really your niece? And so Opie's grandpa is your dad? All of your siblings are in their, like, 40s. Yeah, I basically blew up his entire friend group with that one pick. He's not talking to me and is pretty ticked. I don't see OP doing that spitefully. OP was literally just doing what this man wanted. You're not the a-hole for doing that. He's the a-hole for putting so much pressure on you, and then it finally coming out and him getting the repercussions, and then putting that on you? Oh my god, you did the thing that I told you to do and it had bad repercussions and I have to take responsibility for my action now? God, you suck. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. No, OP, not the a-hole. He sucks. He's dumb. Not the a-hole. R slash malicious compliance is funny. You did exactly what he told you to. He shouldn't be mad. The tables have turned. He can't even be mad, he wanted to be called uncle, and all the other aunts and uncles also thought he should be called uncle. It's not even that uncommon for uncles and aunts to be a similar age to nieces and nephews, depending on the age of the parents. And while some people might find it weird, it wouldn't collapse your friend group unless you lied about it. Not the a-hole. He asked you to call him uncle? You did so. Maybe not in the context he was asking for, but he doesn't get to insist that you call him uncle in one setting, and keep it a secret elsewhere. Also, why is it embarrassing to him if he is the same age as his niece? It just means that he is much younger than one of his siblings, and that sibling has kids at a relatively young age. So what? Ha, 
My mum had me at 30. My grandpa had me with his now ex-step-grandma. Ex-step-grandma remarried, and he let people assume his stepdad was his bio-dad. I didn't know this until I posted that pic. Oh, this info would have been useful for the OP. Not that it changes the judgement, not the a-hole still, but it makes it seem weird that he'd be upset without this info. He was lying to people about his family relationship, you tell the truth because he was basically insisting that you do, and now he's mad? Yeah, whatever. Posted by user throwaway908173, titled, Am I the a-hole for taking away my son's inheritance? Hello, I will try to make this brief. I, 56, and my wife, 54, have a son, 23, who just got married. He is an only child. My wife and I came to America when I was 22 years old. We knew no one had no jobs, but over the years we got a small restaurant and were able to make a living. Ten years after we got to the USA, we brought my mother-in-law over. We had saved for years to give our son money when he turned 25. In our culture, you give your child money when they are young and starting out because they will take care of you when you are old, so they can buy a bigger house, etc. This is our culture, our son knew about this his whole life, his grandmother has lived with us her entire life, she just turned 81 and still lives with us. My son got married in December. It was a nice wedding, and his wife is very nice. She's a white American, I'm not adding that because I believe she is racist, but it will explain some cultural differences. In March, all five of us were having dinner, and his wife mentioned that they were going to start looking at houses when the pandemic is over. My wife mentioned a bedroom on the first floor for we to come live with them. My wife said it in a joking way. We weren't planning to live with them for another 10 plus years, at least until we retire. My daughter-in-law looked shocked. She asked why can't we just use the guest room if we wanted to spend the night. My son then tells me that she isn't used to our culture and that they would prefer to live with the family they make. Honestly, I and my wife didn't know what to say. Our son gave us the impression that he was fine with us living with him when we got older. He would even show us guest homes and the likes from magazines. Currently, we have about $800,000 saved that we planned to give our son. It's not a huge amount to support three people, especially older people. After they left, my wife and I discussed our options, and we decided that our best course of action was to speak to our bank and use our money for retirement. He knows about the money, but not how much. I told my son and daughter-in-law about the new plan, and my son got mad at me, saying that he planned to use some of the money for a down payment on a house. This is our only money for retirement. It was supposed to go to him because he was supposed to take care of us. We have to take care of ourselves now and don't feel like we owe him that money. Am I the a-hole? Edit, they don't want us to live with them. They said it when told them the plan. My daughter-in-law says that she would constantly feel like they were having guests over. She also said it wasn't because she didn't love us. She also doesn't want her own mother to live with them. Edit 2. Because we're business owners, we take deductions that affect our social security benefits. We will not get a lot, but my wife and I are healthy now, and we can work into our 70s or 80s maybe. I hope that clears some things up. Well, they're business owners, and they know what they have to do with their money. I'm going to say the parents are definitely not the a-hole in this situation. If the son isn't planning to make that accommodation for them, and they don't have an option outside of this money they have, why should he take that money off them in, in this point and leave them with absolutely no money or ability to look after themselves in their old age? I think that the son is being greedy in this situation and needs to respect that these people are not going to give them that money. He is an adult, he can make that money for his own house deposit and can pay it himself like everyone else does. The parents have to look after themselves, everyone has needs, the parents are not the a-holes. No one's an a-hole here. Expectations change and that's fine. If he's not going to take care of you, you need that money to take care of yourself. That's really all there is to it. Yep, it's really as simple as that. If anyone is a bit of an a-hole, it would be OP's son for still feeling entitled to the money when he knew the expectations that accompany it. It was never phrased as, here's a bunch of money because we love you. It's been known all along that it's a, here's a bunch of money to offset the cost of taking care of us. OP's son is allowed to change his mind, and only wants his wife and their children living in their home, and no longer want the OP plus wife to live with them. 
But that money is for OP plus wife retirement. That retirement now just looks different than they expected based on years of understanding. I'd say Sun is the a-hole for that reason. He knows the drill and is getting pissy because he wants the money for himself without fulfilling his side of the bargain. OP asks, how do I explain that to him so he understands? And you can say, while we'd love to help you with the house, this money was set aside for our expenses during retirement. You and your wife aren't caring for us in our advanced age, which we respect and accept, but that means we need it to care for ourselves. Maybe add, it'll all pass to you once we pass away, but until we do, we need to pay for a home, and I personally have a responsibility to set up your mother to live safe and dignified in case I pass before her, and vice versa. It's fine if you and your wife can't take us in, but that changes our plans, because it means there's a nursing home to budget for. You're definitely not the a-hole OP. Not the a-hole. Your son has been well aware of what the money was for his entire life. He chose not to tell his wife anything about it, and chose not to volunteer the information to you that it wouldn't be happening. Only you found out because of a fluke in a random conversation. Why on earth would he think for even a minute that he would still get the money to take care of you when he had no intention of actually taking care of you? At this point, even if he said he changed his mind, I wouldn't give him a penny without getting something drawn up by an attorney and signed by all of you, stating what you expected in exchange for the money. Agreed. The son seems to be an a-hole on up to three fronts. One, his reaction to their decision to keep this money as retirement money. He knew their plan was to retire with him, and he just told them that they can't. He should expect their plans to change and shouldn't be guilt-tripping them about it. They are changing their plans to accommodate him and his wife's desires. 2. Not informing his wife about any of this in advance. He put her in a very awkward position, though it does sound like she's handling this very well. 3. He may have been trying to delay this conflict until after he had the money. That's not clear from the post, but I have to wonder. If it's true, it upgrades his level of a-holery significantly. I'm not sure how much of these factors is in play. He's somewhere on the spectrum of a-holes, though. Alright guys, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this one today. Tell me what you thought of it down in the comments below. Um, if you're not subscribed to the channel, I would love you to subscribe because I love your face and I love seeing you here every single day that you are here in this video. I don't know what else to say today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the content. I do have a second channel that's called Marky2. Link should be up on the screen somewhere here if you don't have Adblock installed. Uh, if you don't know where to find the channel, you can go to my main page. Just click on the Marky face and it should be on the right somewhere there or on channels if you're on phone hope you guys have a good one i'll see you in the next one bye